Welcome everyone to our first lecture today. And this will be a very unique uh, lecture because our speaker, Hilary de Sousa, he's a research associate at center, at the Linguistic Center of uh, Asia, right? Can okay. I say it in English like this? East, A East Asia, East Asia. Yes, and he's one of the top researchers in, uh, in the topic of Pinhua dialect and in many others. You can uh, look upon his site uh, his website and you will see a lot of really very good articles and books uh, you will be like drawn in them and i do hope that today's presentation will enlighten you of some features of nanin pinghua because pinghua is actually a very difficult um, dialect to search information about and hilary is one of the few few researchers who uh, who is main aim is to research uh, Pinhua, so I'll give the floor to our most welcomed speaker today. Hilario, you can start now. Okay, I will start now. Um, yes, so hello everyone. Um, uh, I am Hilario de Souza. My talk today is a very informal one. I'll be talking about some linguistic features of Nanning Pinghua and contrasting them with those in other Sinitic and non-Sinitic languages in the region. So first of all, Nanning is the capital of Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region in far southern China. Nanning is in um, like south central Guangxi. To the north northeast are the next two largest cities of Guangxi, Liuzhou and Guilin. Going clockwise, Surrounding Guangxi are the Gulf of Tonkin, Vietnam, and the Chinese provinces of Yunnan, Guizhou, Hunan, Guangdong, and um, in the vicinity you, know, you also have Hainan province. In terms of ethnicity in Guangxi, um, about one third of the people are Zhuang, more in the west, and two thirds of the people are Han Chinese, more in the east. And in terms of language, about 14 million speakers there are 14 million speakers of Zhuang languages and 33 million speakers of Sinitic languages in Guangxi. And there are also many other smaller languages and ethnicities in Guangxi. Mm. Most of Guangxi lie in the basin of the Pearl River. Most tributaries flow westward into the Pearl River Delta in Guangdong. And also in the Pearl River Delta are Hong Kong and Macau. Now to the southwest, is the basin of the Red River, Red River. The Vietnamese nation originated in the Red River Delta. In Northern China, the Chinese nation began in the Yellow River region. And in the earliest days, there were the Chinese states in the Yellow River, Huai River and the Yangtze River region. In 221 BCE, um, the Qin Dynasty unified the Chinese states. Now, to the south, there are the Pearl River and the Red River. For Chinese people to reach um, this region, um, in the earliest days, people either go through the Xiang River or the Gan River, and these are the tributaries of the Yangtze River. In 214 BCE, the Lingqu Canal was, uh, was built, linking the Xiang River with the Pearl River system. And um, the Chinese people, uh, the Qin soldiers, they defeated the indigenous people in this region to the south of them. And for the first time, Chinese political structures were set up in the Pearl River and the Red River region. So in the earliest days, there were more Han Chinese people in Guangxi in Vietnam in the west than Guangdong in the east. Things changed in the 8th century CE. So during um, Tang Dynasty, the Plum Pass Road, Mei Guan Dao, was built linking the Gan River with the Pearl River region. So since then, well, suddenly there was a flood of Northern Chinese migrants going down the Gan River into Guangdong. Within decades of the opening of the Plum Pass Road, the Han Chinese population in Guangdong surpassed that of Guangxi and Vietnam to the west. Okay, nowadays you have a lot more people, especially um, Han Chinese people in the east than Guangxi in the west. Now this is a map of the Sinitic languages in the southeastern China. 
there are three phonetic dialect groups which are primarily associated with the Gan river root. And they are Gan, Hakka, and Yue. They have 48 million, 42 million, and 68 million speakers respectively. So this is the Gan river root in the, west, in the east. To the west, there is the Xiang river root. And there are three phonetic dialect groups which are associated with the Xiang river root. And they are Xiang, Southwestern Mandarin, and Pinghua. Xiang has 31 million speakers. Southwestern Mandarin has 24 million speakers in Hunan and Guangxi, and Pinghua only has 4 million speakers. So as you can see from these numbers, that uh, there are a lot more people, a lot more Northern Chinese migrants who went down the Gan River than the Xiang River in the West. But of course, note that these genetic speakers, uh, they, have, um, they have both genetic and non genetic ancestors, meaning that many of them have ancestors who came from northern China, and they also have ancestors who are native people who shifted into speaking Chinese. Now, focusing back to far southern China, Yue and Pinghua basically lie on a dialect continuum. Yue is primarily northern Chinese that came through the Gan River, plus influences of something like an earlier form of Pinghua that used to be spoken in this region and influences from the indigenous languages. On the other hand, Pinghua is primarily northern Chinese that came through the Xiang River, plus influences from the indigenous languages and very recent influences from Cantonese and southwestern Mandarin. Zooming into Guangxi, so you have Pinghua, orange, and larger than Pinghua are Yue, green, uh, southwestern Mandarin, pink, and Hakka, which is a khaki color, brown, a khaki color. Mm. Uh, Yue and Hakka came from Guangdong to the east, into Guangxi, whereas southwestern Mandarin came from the north through Hunan. As for the Yue dialects in Guangxi, there are two broad types. First of all, um, in the east, you have this big piece of a uh, non Cantonese dialect of Yue. So these are Yue dialects which spread gradually um, from east to west from Guangdong. The second type of Yue dialect in Guangxi are these um, Cantonese enclaves. So they form these Cantonese varieties, they form many small enclaves in Guangxi, and they're also very influential. Uh, these Cantonese enclave varieties in Guangxi, they were usually brought in by people who went directly from Canton area, Guangzhou area, directly to um, the West in Guangxi within the last um, 150 years or so. Okay, so there are these two types of Yue dialects in Guangxi, Cantonese and non-Cantonese Yue dialects. Um, also spoken in Guangxi are the Xiang dialects in the far north, and also are many small enclaves of Southern Ming. Uh, but, but these are not shown in this map because this is a very rough map. Okay, so there are six genetic dialect groups in Guangxi. And this is a map of the non phonetic languages in Guangxi. Uh, the green blue color, most people speak a Gredo language. Uh, the largest of which are Northern Zhuang and Southern Zhuang. And they're also smaller um, Gredo languages, primarily in the north. Okay, so these are the Gredo languages. So Zhuang, the Zhuang languages, they are the relatives of, for example, um, Thai and Lao. Okay, relatives of Thai and Lao. And um, there are also the pink, the Hmong Mian languages. And there are also other smaller languages like um, Vietnamese here and other Austroasiatic languages. And there are also small um, like um, tibeto burman languages in Guangxi. So Guangxi in general is very, very linguistically diverse. As for Nanning itself, um, a number of languages are spoken in Nanning. Schematically, in the city center, you have people speaking Nanning Cantonese, Bai Hua, white language, Bai Hua Cantonese. Mm, Cantonese speakers arrived from Guangdong within the last 150 years or so. Well, actually, most of them arrived even later than that. In the surrounding suburbs, you have people speaking Pinghua, which is the oldest phonetic language in the area. And um, 
There is also Old Nanning Mandarin, Old Nanning Mandarin, Yongzhou Guanhua, which is a type of southwestern Mandarin, which used to be spoken in the city center, but then they have been pushed out by Cantonese speakers. And Yongzhou Guanhua, Old Nanning Mandarin, is now only uh, spoken in some villages. Further afield, in the uh, villages further away, you have speakers of Northern Zhuang and Southern Zhuang, and these are the indigenous languages. Okay? And covering all these languages now is New Nanning Mandarin, or Nanning Putonghua, Nanpo, which is um, Nanning's localized version of modern standard Mandarin. Okay, so there are these six languages in Nanning. And well, people move around and these languages, they have all strongly influenced each other. So um, the Nanning Mandarin sounds slightly different from standard Mandarin and Nanning Cantonese also sounds slightly different from standard Cantonese. Okay, um, as a little sampler, well, actually I originally wanted to play you a video. However, I have discovered a um, technical difficulty namely that uh, the sound wouldn't cast. So I will still show you the video, but instead um, I myself, I'll do the voiceover, okay, in this video. So in this video, you have a little girl from Wutang, a village of uh, the town of Wutang, which is to the northeast of Nanning city center. She'll be speaking two sentences each in Northern Zhuang, Cantonese, Pinghua, Standard Mandarin, and Southwestern Mandarin. Uh, Northern, Guangxi, uh, Northern Guangxi Mandarin, Gui Liu Hua. Uh, these are the five languages that she can speak. Um, things to look out for is that, um, firstly, Northern Zhuang. In Northern Zhuang, they have no aspirated consonants. So this is the stereotypical Guangxi accent. So when they speak Chinese, they typically turn, uh, for example, te into de, te into de, ke into de, etc., right? So for example, uh, 大片 becomes 大便, right? This is the accent. Mm, yeah, because they do not have aspirated consonants, they do not have p, t, k, everything becomes b, d, g. Okay, so this is Northern Zhuang. Next, Cantonese and Southern Pinghua, they sound rather similar, but uh, like they sound slightly different. They use different words. For example, um, Cantonese, the verb to be is hai. Whereas um, Pinghua, the verb to be is Shi. Okay? And as for Mandarin, um, many of you know uh, Mandarin. Mm, Standard Mandarin and Southwestern Mandarin. They are languages where the syllables can end in a vowel, N or N, but not M, P, T, and K like the other languages. And um, these two types of Mandarin, yeah, they have uh, used different words and they sound slightly different. Um, for example, uh, standard Mandarin, there are four tones. The four tones are ah, 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 ah. Whereas in Northern Guangxi Mandarin, the four tones are ah, 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 ah. Okay, I'll show you this video now. And I will be doing the um, voice over, okay? I'll start this video now. How the Bun bao xuong, bao kiang yi ka wa xuong, wo hai tam neng yan. Tang yi gong tang wa, wo shi wo tang yan, gam lin ta shui. Wo shi zhang zhu ren, wei shuo hu tong hua, wo shi wu tang yan. Nghe zi luo zi fan. Okay, so this is a, oh, sorry, I have forgotten to share the tab. I'll do this again, I'm sorry, okay? Oh, okay, share this video. I'll do this again, I'm sorry. How do you want to show you? Okay, Nohai
Okay, I hope that you enjoyed that little video. Right. Uh, and some note on Nanning Pinghua itself. So first of all, uh, there is no standard variety of, variety of Pinghua. People often switch to Cantonese or Mandarin or sometimes strong when speaking to other people. Secondly, each suburb has a slightly different variety of Pinghua. Thirdly, my data primarily, um, my data primarily from the suburb of Wei Zilu, Wei Jilu, which is to the northwest of the city center of Nanning. Fourthly, um, facts discussed here do not necessarily apply to other varieties of Nanning Pinghua because first of all, they are all slightly different. Uh, that is because um, they have different levels of influences from Cantonese, Mandarin, and Adrang. Okay, so they are all slightly different. So um, we can have a look at the phonology. First of all, um, Pinghua is commonly divided into Southern Pinghua and Northern Pinghua. Nani Pinghua is a type of Southern Pinghua. Southern Pinghua is relatively similar to the average Yue dialect. For example, they have a medium high to high level of conservatism with the codes of PTK, M, N, N of Middle Chinese. So uh, early Middle Chinese is about early Middle Chinese is about um, sixth century CE. The following examples of characters with the codes of P, T, K, M, and N. Okay, so these characters mean 10, 8, 6, 3, 000, and 0. In early Middle Chinese, they end in P, T, K, M, and N. Now, Southern Pinghua and Yue dialects, they are relatively conservative with these codes. So, Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua, Slap Ba Lok, Sam Qin Lun, right? So, not 100%, but uh, quite good quite good in the preservation of these coders. Nanning Cantonese, Sabat Lok, Sam Chin Ling, right? Perfect. I'm contrasting these with Mandarin. In most Mandarin dialects, they have not preserved P, T, K, and M. For example, standard Mandarin, uh, now this is um, IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. Standard Mandarin, Shi Ba Liu, and in old Nanning Mandarin, Xi Ba Lu San Qian Lin. Right? So um, in most Mandarin dialects, P, T, and K are dropped, and M has turned into an N. Right? So um, Mandarin dialects are much less conservative in this front. So um, you have these two types of phonetic languages, which sound rather different. Next, um, unfortunately, originally I wanted to show you this video where they are speaking Southwestern Mandarin and Northern Pinghua, and more specifically Guilin Mandarin and Guilin Pinghua. However, um, yeah, as I told you, I cannot cast the sound and you know, I cannot do these languages. But um, I can show you a video where they are speaking Nanning Cantonese and Southern Pinghua, uh, meaning Nanning Pinghua. In the video, the woman, she speaks in Nanning Cantonese first, and then she switches to Nanning Pinghua when the interview starts. Um, I won't show you the entire video, but I'll show you like one minute of it, okay? And this time around, I'll remember to cast the video. <laughs> okay, you can see the video, hopefully. Yes, you can see the video. Okay, I'll start this video now, starting with Nanning Cantonese. Well, right there. Nam Sing, I think I got the Mong Kin Yoga, you Nam Gong Yan. Could be a Southern Yan. 我要跟他聊天 
，嚇七百蚊啊，十八十蚊啊，十蚊零三千蚊啊，嗯，雞時有隻雞日啊，啊啊，分咗七小時啊，或者一個鐘頭。Okay, I、um, don't need to show you the entire video. Coming back to the slides now,、uh, again, I hope you enjoyed that video. In learning Cantonese and then learning Pinghua, and again,、uh, they sound rather similar. Okay,、uh, these are the onset, these are the initial consonants in Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua and Nanning Cantonese. Nanning Cantonese has a distinction between s and s. On the other hand, Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua does not. But actually, most、um, ways looking at is the odd one out because most Nanning Pinghua varieties they actually have a s versus s or s versus s type of distinction. It just so happens that ways looking at has merged these two into a s. Nanning Pinghua has a ni, but、uh, Cantonese does not. Ni is common in Pinghua and Western Yue dialects. And also, for for example, in like Zhuang, Vietnamese, and Lao, they also have nia. But、uh, but then Cantonese and and Thai as well, nia has usually merged into ya. For example,、um, Mandarin zhen meaning people zhen in Mandarin is nian nian in Pinghua, but yan in Cantonese, right? Nia has merged into ya in Cantonese. Now these are the vowels in Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua and Nanning Cantonese. In Cantonese, there are the rounded front vowels of u, 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 but there is no unrounded high back vowels. Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua is the opposite. Wei Zilu Pinghua does not have front rounded vowels, but Pinghua has u, unrounded high back vowels. Okay. Now this situation. In Wei Zilu Pinghua is typical of main and Southeast Asian languages. So most Pinghua varieties, most Zhuang varieties, are like this.、Right. However, there are some Pinghua and Zhuang varieties, but which are more like Cantonese. But they are in the minority. Most main and Southeast Asian languages are like this, as in Wei Zilu Pinghua. On the other hand. Uh, the situation in Nanning Cantonese is typical of phonetic languages, meaning having rounded front vowels. So, for example, Mandarin also has u, but um, but not having unrounded back vowels. This is typical of phonetic languages. Ah,、uh, but then there are also some Yue dialects and some strong varieties. Uh, oh, oh no, there are some Yue dialects which are more like Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua. Right now onto tones. Okay, I'll need to do some explanation first because this is a bit more complicated. So first of all,、um, Middle Chinese, Middle Chinese, which is about sixth、uh, century CE, sixth century CE,、uh, Middle Chinese、um, had four tones: tones A, B, C, and D. 平上去入 Now the tones develop differently in the different modern Sinitic languages, usually depending on the initial consonant in Middle Chinese. So it depends on whether the、um, initial consonant was voiceless or voiced, and if it is voiced, whether it is sonorant or obstruent. In standard Mandarin,、uh, you know that a standard Mandarin has four tones, but they develop from the tones of Middle Chinese like this. So tone A of Middle Chinese became a a. Tone B became a a. Tone C became a. Uh, tone D is、uh, complicated, and we'll talk about that a bit later. Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua has seven tone names, and Cantonese has six tone names. And I'll just demonstrate six of them. In Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua, these six characters are fun, 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 corresponding with Cantonese fun, 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 fun. So it's, you can hear. The upper tones are slightly different between Pinghua and Cantonese, but the lower tones they are、um, similar enough. Fun, 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 fun. The upper tones are quite different. Fun, fun,、uh, fun, fun, fun. Whereas Cantonese,、um, corresponding with Cantonese, fun, fun, fun.、Yeah. And also, by the way, these six characters in Mandarin are 
分粉粉分分分。嗯 ，looking at ways 卢平话 ，they 呃、uh, ，they have two upper tone Cs. Depending on whether the initial is aspirated or unaspirated. So, for example, poi, poi, they have different tones because poi begins with p aspirated. Poi has an initial consonant which is unaspirated b. Cantonese has no such distinction.、Uh, Cantonese and Mandarin have no such distinction. So, poi, poi, same tone. Pei, pei, same tone. Now, actually, this distinction in ways Lu Pinghua is actually just a、um, local phenomenon in northwestern Nanning. Most Nanning Pinghua varieties、uh, do not have this, so they have only six tones, like Nanning Cantonese. I'll talk about tone D now. Tone D in Middle Chinese means that the syllable ends in an obstruent. It ends in a P, T, or K. In most Yue dialects, including Cantonese. In Pinghua dialects to the east of Nanning, and also the Dai and Gamsui branches of the Dai family, it is very common for tone D to split based on whether the、um, vowel is long or short. Okay, tone D long vowel, tone D short vowel. For example,、um, the characters for, for seven and eight in Cantonese they have different tones. Tap ba, tap ba, because tap. Has a short vowel, but has a long vowel. The same happens in Zhuang, Northern Zhuang, sub bad, sub bad, because bad has a long vowel, sub has a short vowel. Now this does not exist. This does not happen in Nanning Pinghua. The characters for seven and eight, sub, but they have the same tone. So Cantonese sub, but different tone. Pinghua sub, but. They have just they have the same tone.、Um, this trait of、um, splitting tone D based on vowel length、um, does not exist in other phonetic languages. So, for example, Mandarin qi ba same tone. All Nanning Mandarin qi ba same tone. The same thing happens in Sino-Vietnamese put ba same tone. What Nanning Pinghua has instead is a division in lower tone D. And this is based on whether the initial consonant is historically a sonorant or obstruent. For example, the characters for six and ten in Nanning Pinghua they have different tones: lo, sub, different tones: lo, sub, lo, because the initial consonant is sonorant, l, and sub because the initial consonant is s obstruent. Okay, different tones. Standard Mandarin also makes such a distinction, like liu shi have different tones. Now, looking at the tone chart of Standard Mandarin, um, most Mandarin dialects they make a distinction like this in tone D, liu shi. On the other hand, Cantonese does not do that. So the characters for six and ten, lu sub, have the same tone. So lu sub, Pinghua different tone, lu. Cantonese same tone. All the Nanning Mandarin also does not have such a distinction, right? All Nanning Mandarin as a type of Southwestern Mandarin does not have this distinction. So Lu Xi they have the same tone. Looking at tone chart of、um, all Nanning Mandarin, one feature of most Southwestern Mandarin dialects is that、um, they do not make any distinctions in tone D. Okay, so this is a feature of southwestern Mandarin. So Lu Xi have the same tone in southwestern Mandarin, whereas standard Mandarin they are different. Liu Xi and、um, Sino Vietnamese.、Uh, oh, by the way, Sino Vietnamese means the Chinese loan words in Vietnamese. Okay, so Sino Vietnamese and、um, there's similarly no distinction. Lu Te. Right. The next topic that I would like to talk about is、uh, what happens to the voiced plosives in Middle Chinese. So in Middle Chinese, there was a distinction of, for example, b p b. Okay, b is a voiced plosive, and this also occurs in other places of articulation as well. For example, 
um, in Middle Chinese, you have a the, te, de, and also the, te, de, ge, ke, ge, and so forth. Um, in some Sinitic languages, the three way distinction is kept. For example, in Wu and also some Xiang dialects. For instance, Shanghainese, Wu, Pu, Bu, okay, Be, Pe, Be. However, in most Sinitic languages, Be has become voiceless, Be or Pe. Okay, Be unaspirated, Pe aspirated. So, um, Southern Pinghua is a dialect group where B has become a voiceless, unaspirated B. Hakka is a dialect group where B has become aspirated P, right? So Southern Pinghua and Hakka sound quite different. As for Cantonese and Mandarin, B can become B or P depending on the tone. I'll show you examples in the next slide. And also, by the way, before we move on, uh, we're here using international phonetic alphabet, B, P. So because in pinyin and yuping, what is written as B and P are actually um, both voiceless. So the B and P in pinyin and yuping are actually these two in IP, B, P, okay? So we're using IP here. So some examples, these four characters, in Middle Chinese, they begin with a B, voiced plosive. And these four characters, they are in tones A, B, C, and D, respectively. In Pinghua, usually B becomes unaspirated B in all tones. These four characters in Nanning Pinghua, Ben Bei Ben Bei, Ben Bei Ben Bei, right? All of them are unaspirated. So the character for Ping, flat, in Pinghua is actually unaspirated Ben. So Pinghua in Ben, Pinghua in Pinghua is Ben Wa, Ben Wa, unaspirated. Next, Mandarin. To cut a long story short, in Mandarin usually B becomes P in tone A, and B, unaspirated B in tones B, C, and D. So standard Mandarin, Ping Bei Bing Bai, Ping Bei Bing Bai, and in old Nanning Mandarin, Pin. Okay. Now Cantonese, again to cut a very long story short, in Cantonese B usually becomes aspirated P in tones A and B and unaspirated P in tones C and D. So none in Cantonese, Peng Pi, Bang Ba, Peng Pi, Bang Ba. So this is Cantonese. And Hakka, Hakka is a language where B becomes aspirated P in all tones. So for example, in Lu Chuan, Hakka, Lu Chuan is to the far east, it is in the far east of Guangxi. In Lu Chuan, Hakka, Piang Pi, Piang Pak, Piang Pi, Piang Pak. So in general, if you look, if you listen to Hakka, there's a lot of aspirated consonants, like Pak, 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 right? Whereas Pinghua is the utter opposite. There's relatively very few aspirated consonant. And lastly, Quan Zhou Xiang in far northern Guangxi is an example where they have preserved the B very well. Okay, so I don't speak Xiang, but um, these four characters are something like Bing Bi, Bing Be, Bing Bi, Bing Be, okay, all voiced. Okay. So um, when you listen to different Sinitic languages, one thing that you can listen to is what characters are aspirated or unaspirated, right? So you can listen to whether the characters are aspirated or unaspirated, and to, you can you can identify them to some degree. You can identify um, what dialect group they belong to to some degree. And this is a rough map showing you that um, retaining voice or becoming voiceless unaspirated is a trait that is primarily associated with the Xiang River root. So there are Xiang, Pinghua, and Golu Yue dialects, which are, they're usually like this. On the other hand, becoming voiceless aspirated is a trait that is primarily associated with the Gan River root. So there are Gan and Hakka, which are primarily like this. Next, um, I will show you some maps from the Linguistic Atlas of Chinese Dialects. 
汉语方言地图集。南宁 is here, and there. There are two dots because the left dot is Nanning Cantonese, and the right dot is Nanning Tingzi Pinghua. So Tingzi Pinghua can be slightly different from、um, from Wei Zi Lu Pinghua, which is the variety that I collected my data from. But、uh, whenever there is a difference, I will talk about them.、Mm. Now we are concentrated. We're concentrating on this region,、uh, which is primarily the Pearl River region, and very roughly the western two third are、uh, Yue dialects, roughly. And the eastern two, eastern one third are Pinghua dialects, roughly. I'll be showing you some east-west differences, but the Arthur glosses they usually do not lie cleanly on the supposed boundary between Pinghua and Yue. So sometimes you have the western Yue dialects behaving more like Pinghua, and sometimes you have the eastern Pinghua dialects behaving more like Yue. Now because we're talking about a dialect continuum here. Now, Nanning Cantonese is here.、Uh, usually, it has kept the eastern trait because they've come from the east、uh, rather recently. But then sometimes Nanning Cantonese they have acquired a western trait because、um, uh, well because they now live in the west, despite how、um, be, despite they have been in the west for not many years. Right, this map. Um, here we're talking about the pronunciation of particular characters. And in this map, we are looking at the pronunciation of the character B, meaning nose. The black dot, the black dots are nose in tone D, and the red dots are nose in tone C. Nan Ning Ping Hua is a black dot. It has the tone D version, but right, tone D, but、uh, tone D in Southern Ping Hua means that the syllable ends in an obstruent, and in this case, it ends in a T. So Nanning Pinghua, the nose, the word for nose is ba. Now the words for the word of nose in standard Mandarin B and old Nanning Mandarin B, they are also originally、uh, they also come from tone D. Looking at the black dots, you have Pinghua and some Western Yue dialects and Mandarin and some Xiang dialects, Gan and. So in these dialects, um, usually they have the word nose in tone D, or they come from tone D. Now looking at the red dots, Cantonese has the tone C version of nose. Nanning Cantonese B, Standard Cantonese B, oh no, B, Standard Cantonese B, Nanning Cantonese B, tone C. So Nanning Cantonese B versus Nanning Pinghua B. Looking at the red dots. The tone C version nose is common in Yue dialects, some Xiang dialects, Hakka and Ming. Okay, so this is nose. Next, this map we are looking at the character Tin, meaning to listen. The black dots are listen in tone A, and the red dots are listen in tone C. Cantonese Tang comes from tone A, and Pinghua Ten comes from tone C. Actually, Cantonese also has a tone C ting, but this is a literary pronunciation. Okay, so tone A ting and tone C ting. Now, what about Mandarin? If you listen to Taiwanese Mandarin, they have both ting in tone A and ting in tone C. So tone A ting is the ordinary word meaning to listen, but tone C ting it means, for example, number one to govern. Govern and administer, like this phrase, "Tui Lian Tian Gang," which is to、um, to govern behind lower screen. Tian Gang is to deal with politics, deal with、um, administration. Tian Gang.、Okay. So in Taiwan, they have a Taiwanese Mandarin. They have a distinction between Tian Tone A and Tian Tone C. But then in mainland China, in mainland Chinese Mandarin, they have merged both of these into Tone A Tian. So going back to Nanning, the Nanning Cantonese Tang tone A and Pinghua Ten in tone C. In this map, we're looking at the pronunciation of Fu Mansion and Hu Tiger. Cantonese is a red dot, where these two are pronounced the same. Fu, Fu. Now, looking at the red dots, you also have、um, many southwestern Mandarin dialects, like those in many of those in Guangxi and 
Guizhou and Hunan, they also like this, where these two characters are pronounced the same. So for example, in Northern uh, Guangxi Mandarin, they're both Fu, Fu. On the other hand, Nanning Pinghua is a black dot, where these two are pronounced differently, like Mandarin, like standard Mandarin. So Nanning Pinghua, Fu or Fo is a mansion, Ha is a tiger, Fu, Ha, they're different. Sign of Vietnamese is also like this, Fu, Ho, where they're different. Now in this map, we're looking at the pronunciation of the characters Dai to bring and Dai bag. In Middle Chinese, they have different vowels. Cantonese is a red dot. And these two vowels are still different in Cantonese. Dai, Doi. On the other hand, Naming Pinghua is a black dot. And the vowels have become the same. Naming Pinghua, Dai, Dai. Uh, Sign of Vietnamese to the southwest are also, is also like this. Uh, let me think. In Sign of Vietnamese, Tai, Tai. And in Mandarin, these two are pronounced exactly the same. Tai, Tai. Okay. So Cantonese, Tai, Doi. Pinghua, Tai, Tai. This map shows you the um, pronunciation of the characters Bao, meaning treasure, and Bao, full stomach. The, uh, again, these two characters had different vowels in Middle Chinese. Cantonese is a blue dot, where these are still pronounced differently. Standard Cantonese, bo, bao. Naning Cantonese, bo, bao. Okay, they're different. On the other hand, Naning Pinghua is a black dot, where they, are, where they have the same vowel. Naning Pinghua, both of these are bao, bao. And son of Vietnamese, uh, let me say. Bao, bao, and in standard Mandarin, they're also the same. Bao, bao. So Cantonese, bu, bao, naning pinghua, bao, bao. In this map shows you the vowel in the word, in the character cun, meaning inch. Cantonese is a blue dot, where the vowel is yu, Cantonese tun. To the west, yeah, these black dots, these Yue dialects and Pinghua dialects, where the vowel of Chun is Wu, as in Binyang Pinghua and Nanning Tingzi Pinghua, Chun. Further to the west, you have these red dots, these Pinghua dialects, where the vowel is O, as in Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua, Chun. So from east to west, with this character Chun, there is a climb where the vowel goes from Yu to Wu to or chun chun ton. This map shows you the pronunciation of the character wu, meaning five. Cantonese is a blue dot, where five is pronounced um, as a syllabic nasal. Then a Cantonese mm, mm, is five. Okay, there's no phonetic vowel here. Mm, it's just a nasal. Mm. On the other hand, Naning Pinghua is a red dot. In southern Pinghua, you tend not to have syllabic nasals like Cantonese. So for example, in Nanning Wei Zilu Pinghua, ngo. So Cantonese, ng, Pinghua, ngo. Yeah, syllabic nasals are very common in um, like Yue dialects and northern Pinghua and also um, Hakka. Right, next, I'll be talking about some grammatical traits now grammatical traits. The first trait that I'll talk about is clusivity. So one notable trait is that um, in Southern Guangxi at least, the Southern Pinghua dialects there, they have a clusivity distinction, whereas Yue dialects do not. For example, I'm first of all looking at spoken Beijing Mandarin. Beijing Mandarin also has a clusivity distinction. So wo, I, woman, we exclusive, we excluding you. And Zan, we inclusive, we including you. Okay, so clusivity distinction is this uh, first person plural distinction where, uh, where there's a distinction between whether you are included or not. Naning Pinghua also has a clusivity distinction. Na, I, 
Nga doi, we exclusive. Wan doi, we inclusive. So by the way, wan, this word wan comes from wun in Zhuang, which means people, wun. Okay. Uh, wun in Zhuang is a cognate of kun in Thai, also meaning people. Wan doi. On the other hand, Yue dialect, like Cantonese, do not have exclusivity distinction. So Naming Cantonese, Ngo, I, Ngo Di, We. So Ngo Di does not distinguish whether you are included or not. Uh, these are just some other examples of Pinghua dialects where they also have a exclusivity distinction and other nearby Yue dialects where they do not. Next, I'll be talking about negation, how negation is expressed. In Mandarin, standard Mandarin, there is a distinction between imperfective negator and perfective negator. So number one, imperfective negator, 我不买. So imperfective um, means very roughly, present and future. 我不买, I do not, or I will not buy. Number two, perfective negator, 我没有买. Uh, perfective is very roughly past. Okay, so 我没有买 is I did not buy. So there's the distinction between 不 and 没有, imperfective versus perfective. However, on the other hand, number three, but then when possession is negated, in negative possession, there is no such distinction. Number three, 我没有钱, I did not, do not, or will not have money. Okay, with possession, there is no imperfective, perfective distinction. In other words, um, when the verb is yo, then it is always mei yo, it is not bu yo. You can only say mei yo when the verb is yo, meaning possession. Our Cantonese is similar. You also have a distinction between imperfective and perfective negator. Now, this is standard Cantonese, okay? So, number one, imperfective, ngo mai. Number two, perfective, ngo mo mai. So there is a distinction between m and mo. Now as for number three, negative possession. In Cantonese to say not have, you say simply mo, ngo mo qin. There's I did not, not, I will not buy, I will not have money. Negative possession is mo, it's simply mo, not mo yao or something like that. Now, however, Nanning Cantonese does things differently. Nanning Cantonese um, uses a pattern that is very common in Guangxi, which is that there is no distinction between one and two. There is no distinction between imperfective and perfective negation. So um, Nanning Cantonese, one and two, ngo mu mai, is I did not, do not, or will not buy. So standard Cantonese in the East has a distinction between m and mo, which is Mandarin, Bu and Mayo. But in Naming Cantonese in the West, both of these are Mu, okay, which is a just a generic negator. And also, number three, negative possession is also expressed differently in Naming Cantonese. In Naning Cantonese, to express negative possession, um, there is a regular expression of Mu Yao, literally not have. Number three, mu yao qin. That means I did not, do not, or will not buy. Right. So in standard Cantonese in the East,
as as just yeah as just extraordinary thank you very much so interesting so many things uh, and you know i i had some questions and i know that people perhaps in chat box just thinking of uh, there is as well Уважаемые участники, пожалуйста, не стесняйтесь писать сейчас вопросы. У нас есть редкая возможность пообщаться со специалистом по Пинхуа и по кантонскому, и, в общем, по всем, на самом деле, диалектам, которые есть в этом регионе. Поэтому не упускайте вообще любые вопросы. Абсолютно в чат очень жду. I'm not sure. Can I say in the, I'm sorry. Can I, what language should I speak? Chinese or English? Of course. And you can understand many more than, than myself. Okay. Okay, it's just for me, so it's like an automatically uh, to speak uh, Ch- Chinese. Okay, uh, I'll try English today. Okay, okay. Uh, 没问题。是这样,我看了,比如说最后一个,你说,是不是南音平话,他们说是,就是那个,那个,那个,普通话的是,就是说知道那个。对对就是我不知道对但不知道他们怎么说那个用平话说很难说但是对但是嗯就是在在现在的现代的普通话他们都是知识对吗这个呃是现在用但是用的就是我我我有我有感觉不是单独用的对吗 我就是想问一下,呃,为什么,就是你认为为什么,因为,呃,知和是两个,就是像那个邻居一样的一个是知一个是是,为什么,知是有可能是因为你刚才说的,呃,粤语是晚一点来的,是不是?有没有这个影响
<笑>对对，这个这个，我这。是的，是的，这个昨天我们一个发言者已经提出来了，就是南方的方言更喜欢单独词，北方的更更喜欢呢两两个字的那样的词，啊、呃，但是你也说的都是从，是不是从北方嗯到南方做，就是古老的时候，对吗？对，但是为什么？嗯，有那么大的区别？如果他们都是去源于北方，为什么北方的变化就是是不是呃旁边那些其他的民族的印象吗？嗯。嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，明白了，明白了，明白了，谢谢您。对我也是，我也，我也。看很多资料，有很多学者，他们各有自己的意见。我就是继续研究这个问题，因为我们嗯、呃，就是给学生介绍现在的普通话里面的是词是里边两个字的有什么之间有什么关系。我经常从不同的方言提出不同的例子，就是想给他们呢、呃、介绍一下现在的普通话和嗯。就是以前的那样的汉语和现在的方言有很大的区别，但是他们都是屈原于一个一个地方，可以这样说。呃，就是关于您呢讲的那个平话，就是我真的我我也听，对有区别，但是你怎么能呃说的很清楚？对我来说是一个 miracle， I I can say。It's so difficult phonetically. Uh, but uh, doesn't they they merge with each other? Just for example, as time going, they are living next one one by one. Next, had they this merge relationship? Like, I mean, now、uh, Ping, I mean Nanning Pinghua from Man Nanning Cantonese. Do you think they will merge into one unique kind of dialect? <laughs> okay, I see. Okay, uh, welcome, uh, our dear, how to say it,、um, audience, uh, to ask your own questions.、Uh, perhaps any one of you have their own question. Oh, yeah, I can see、uh, some of them are typing. Yeah, we have a question. What are the other languages and dialects traditionally spoken in the Nanning area? Have they preserved some loan words or other influence from Pinghua? Yeah, it's interesting. From Pinghua, another language. Yeah. Yeah.
you can do it. <laughs> she thinks the Chinese, just like they say they are Chinese. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. And, and I remember some years ago, you told uh, uh, about the situation, economical situation in this area, and how uh, those who speak of Pinhua, they are now those who have uh, money because they are landlords of some sort, and how it's uh, more and more popular to speak Pinhua. Uh, how, how is it now? Is it still preserve this uh, new interesting situation? Oh, religious, and are they, uh, what religion do they, uh, are they Buddhist? <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. Well, it's, it's so interesting because, you know, uh, under such an influence of other uh, dialects and languages and cultures, of course, Pinghua people, they can preserve not only language, um, but also their uh, culture. It, it, it goes deep into the centuries, right? Their shamanism. I see. Yes, I think. Well, okay, we have another question. Uh, is there any written lit lit literature or poetry on Pinhua? If there is, what would you suggest to read or listen to learn more about Pinhua dialect?
I thank you very much. Um, I, I have never heard about it actually, but I will definitely look into it more deeply. And perhaps next year you can tell us more about the cultural uh, tradition because you know it's it, it closely related to language and it's uh, very very interesting because here in i think in even in english there are so few materials about pinhua is it it's like yeah Oh, well, it will be very welcomed, I think, when you hear it. And, and yeah, you mentioned about uh, the um, corpora, right? From which you have extracted the um, examples or not. Yeah, are those from videos only? Is there any corpora, lang language corpora on Pinghua? Oh. That's that's great. That's great. I, if anyone if anyone asks, I will uh, point them that there is only one man who has it. <laughs> but it's uh, it's difficult to find uh, so, some language corpora on dialects, even for those who are widely speaking. But for Pinhua, it's uh, something very difficult. We have another question here. Does the language of the migration population, Liu Mi, of Pinghua people affect other dialects? Are there any such studies? That's a lot of time. And we have uh, probably the last question for today. Have you, uh, by any chance, heard something about Tao Fu Yu?
Yeah, we'll give them some time to type. The genes of the Pinghua people are quite similar to those of Zhuang people, though. Interesting. But in those areas, you are an expert of the highest class. And thank you. Uh, have you have you done your research there? Of course, on this in this area. I mean, I mean field research. Yes, yes. Have you done field research there? Of course, you have. Mm. And have you have you ever uh, um, you have been working with different generations of people, and do you have any um, feeling that uh, the youngest generation is like you know forget uh, about their language or they don't want to speak? It sounds too rural, perhaps. Have they have does they have this you know internal feeling that? Uh, it's like too suburban to talk. Let's to talk a Mandarin, perhaps. But if in one family they have three different languages, how do they communicate with each other? Using what mostly? Well, that's um, interesting, really, like in, in one place, three generations, three different languages. Uh, and why does, the, why does the second generation speak uh, Nanyin Cantonese, but not the language of their parents of Pinghua? Because of the economical situation?
That's a very interesting language situation uh, there in such places. And in, in Russia, just, you know, it's uh, difficult to, for us, for many places, to understand how it is, like, you don't speak uh, the language of your father and mother. Because we, um, we, we speak, uh, if we are Russians, and we speak Russian language, well, perhaps not very good, but uh, we speak all the same language. And if we are minorities, we certainly understand and mostly speak uh, the language of our parents. But, of course, at school, it's uh, Russian uh, everywhere. But it's a little, it's, uh, well, for me, for me, it's very difficult to understand because my grandfather, he's a, one of the minorities, and he... Uh, well, he speaks his language, but he has, he, he had, uh, it's a Chuvashian language, uh, it's, yeah, uh, but he deliberately, deliberately, uh, hasn't taught his sons of his language. He thought it, uh, it unnecessary and, uh, he never tried, well, we asked, uh, he, him to, 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 to teach us some of the words, um, but he said that he doesn't see a point uh, to to teach us, and he speaks Russian from from the very well from his twenties. He only speaks Russian. Uh, just well, he goes when he went go back to his um, other relatives. He speaks his own language, but never with us, and never tried, and he doesn't want it. And then I think, as I think, it's a little bit, uh, you no, know, Ihan. I'm sorry because I I want to learn a little bit uh, from uh, my grandfather who speaks it fluently, but I can't <laughs> because now I don't have time, and it's a little bit difficult to learn language, and when you're much older, so it's a little bit um, difficult. Uh, but it's, it's his choice not to teach us his language. And he said that he doesn't want us, when we were younger, to have any mixture with uh, Russian. Because in his early ages, good Russian meant good job and for, him, for minorities. And I can understand that perhaps it's the same for those... Uh, in China, that speaking standard Mandarin, it means good job and, you know, like passing as your own kind of people. Uh, like no difference in language means uh, you are the same. It's sometimes socially understandable. And, um, yeah, there is a dialect, it, it, they say, yeah, okay. They will discuss some things later. Uh, thank you very much. It was a very interesting, very throughout uh, discussion. And uh, every time is a great pleasure and a lot of things to learn. And, um, yeah, I, I'd like to ask you about the um, um, these pictures. Uh, they, with dots, with dots, they are all from the, um, how to say it? Yeah, Oh, okay. Oh, I see, I see. And do you know any materials that we can uh, use in our self studies of uh, Chinese dialects, perhaps some data centers or, I don't know, atlases? So, what will you recommend?
But if you remember in the future, please send to us. It's sometimes a little bit confusing to search for such materials. They're not obviously quite popular, so you have to look through uh, like the whole internet to find something reliable. Because there are some websites that um, if you are not a speaker, you can't define define if, if it's real or just like, you know, for fun. So it's, uh, I, I saw this atlas uh, like in a book cover, but it's rather the big one. And, you know, and I have always, yeah, I always uh, thinking like, okay, well, next time, probably next time. But when the pandemic came and I understood that, uh, well, perhaps it's better to have it because never, you never know when you will need it and there will be no, uh, no, way to have it to, to buy it or i don't know, to download it something like this okay thank you thank you very much and i hope you will stay with us uh for uh, for the duration of the festival marjorie today uh, wrote to me that uh, she, she has already finished her presentation and will be yes Yes, me too. And I, uh, I think because of the time difference, perhaps she's not, uh, doesn't have an opportunity to be here with us. Probably on lessons time, I think. Yeah, but we will have uh, this uh, recording for the duration of the festival. So I hope everyone who ha couldn't attend today will listen and watch it later thank you very much and i do hope that you will you will uh, sorry glitch uh that you will share more information about pinhua dialects next year with some new information and perhaps your book Yeah, well, you know, we have uh, more than a hundred people here who will be waiting for your book. <laughs> very much. Thank you. Thank you very much from all our hearts. Very interesting. That's great. And I do want to tell everyone that we have, uh, we will start a uh, competition and uh, Hilario de Sosa will be one of the experts. It's an honor to us and I think it will be a great honor for those who will participate in the, comp in the competition. And the great start will be on the last day of the festival, like, to, you know, to finish it with a great new competition that will last for a year. So I do hope that you will share some more things with us, with our comp Competitors uh, during the year that will lie ahead of them. Thank you very much again. Yes, and you too. And we will stay, how to say, we'll stay tuned, right? Uh, here and don't forget to uh, visit our festival every day. Every day we have a lot of interesting conversations. The recording will be remaining here during the festival. So you, if you want to watch it, watch it quickly. There are only seven days left. And this chat box will be working from today until the end of the times or end of the telegram. Uh, so you can put your information, your web links or ask questions anytime you want. You know, we're actually, when we started promoting this year festival some of people they entered last year festival and they are watching and um, reading information from the last year uh, very very interesting that we're still in this process of learning um, dialects and looking for all this information so thank you very much for compute for your contribution to this great course Thank you and good night.
bye bye.